right, let's count. A 1-mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and a 1-mile run again. That's what the Murph workout consists of. Sound tough? Absolutely. But that's the reason why I decided to do it for 30 days in a row. Challenge accepted. First of all, I'm sure you want to know how I got this idea. Well, one of my best friends recently got into CrossFit. He told me a lot about it, and I finally realized what the difference was between regular gym exercises and a CrossFit workout. A CrossFit workout consists of much more intense circuit training, which focuses on the whole body instead of just one part. If you've ever visited the gym regularly, then you know that some days are leg days only, others are arm days, and so on. With CrossFit, you use almost every muscle you have during each session. Before I start telling you how I prepared for this challenge and what my results were, I want to make it clear that I'm a pretty fit person. I go to the gym three times a week, and my workouts include both weightlifting and cardio. Now, if I were a fitness noob, I'd never even think about going through this challenge. Why? Because it can be dangerous for your health. And even having extensive gym experience, I still consulted my doctor to make sure that my body could endure this ordeal. The Murph workout is no joke, folks. After my doctor approved my idea, I asked my friend to share some tips that would help me along the way. Here's what he told me. Don't work out on an empty stomach. Your body needs fuel for a good performance. Eat a carb-heavy meal a few hours before starting. You can also grab a protein bar 30 minutes before the workout. Don't try to sprint the first mile. It's your warm-up, so don't waste all your energy on it. Break up the sets. No matter how fit you are, tackling all 100 pull-ups at once will simply leave you exhausted. Don't forget about breaks. Have a 30-second rest between reps. Halfway through the workout, take 3-4 to four minutes to wipe off the sweat and drink some water. Fast-forwarding to the present moment, I have to say, all those tips turned out to be super helpful. By the way, I forgot to mention that during a classic Murph workout, you should wear a 20-pound vest. But I'll be honest with you, I thought it would be too much for me. Luckily, there's an outdoor gym in my neighborhood with a bar for pull-ups and a small park nearby for running. So I had everything I needed to start the challenge. I didn't do anything special before the first day, except for drinking a bit more water than usual to make sure my body was hydrated and going to bed earlier. Day 1. Here we go! Being in pretty good shape, running the first mile was easy peasy. After that, I went through 20 sets that consisted of 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 squats each. Somewhere along the way, I started thinking that maybe I should have scaled the workout back to a lighter version, or half-murph. However, by the time I completed it after the second run, I decided to stick to my initial choice. No turning back. When I was done, I barely had energy left in me to take a shower and get to work. Day 2 Oh boy, were my muscles sore the next morning. I realized I forgot about one important thing – stretching. As you probably know, it helps with post-workout soreness. So today, I stretched out before running. Even though every muscle in my body was on fire and screamed for rest, I still felt motivated to keep going. But after the second run, I had to lie on the bench in the park for like 10 minutes straight to steady my breath. Although later, this tiredness changed into a boost of energy that made my day super productive. Day 7 I guess I could say that the first week went smooth. I mean, of course, I still felt unbearably exhausted after each session. This workout is grueling, so it just won't be any other way. But I was happy that I wasn't tempted to give up. I even got used to waking up two hours earlier so that I had time to do the MRF before work. To be honest, I had some doubts before starting the challenge and was sure I wouldn't last longer than a couple of days. Day 12 During the second week, something happened that ruined my uplifting attitude. Everything was fine that day after I finished my workout. I had a meeting at work and then went to have lunch. The food was tasty, but later in the evening, I started feeling dizzy and nauseous. Turned out I had food poisoning, and the only thing I could think of was, I can't skip my workout tomorrow. I went to sleep hoping I'd be able to continue the challenge. Day 13 The next morning was tough, to say the least. I left my bed feeling extremely weak. My stomach was still gurgling. 
But thankfully, the dizziness and nausea were gone. Should I keep pushing myself to the limits? Or should I just quit and let my body rest? What would you do in my place? <laughs> let me know in the comments. Well, I chose to move on no matter what. And let me tell you, the workout on that day might just be the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. Day 15 Halfway through my ordeal, I noticed the first changes in my body. You see, I work at the office and must wear shirts and ties, and when I put on my favorite shirt after the workout, I realized it was too tight on me. Apparently, the muscles on my back have been growing. I was glad about it, but I had no idea that I'd have to change my wardrobe so soon. Day 21 The beginning of the third week was the turning point in my challenge. I guess my body was just mad at me, because I put it through such strenuous training without a single day of rest. And this in turn messed with my mindset. For the first time since starting the challenge, I didn't want to get up and told myself it was okay to skip just one time. To overcome this speed bump, I remembered why I started in the first place – to test myself. Besides, I couldn't let all my efforts be for nothing. It took every ounce of willpower to train on that day. But I did it. Day 30 When I woke up, I couldn't believe it was the last day of the challenge. In the beginning, the whole month seemed so daunting. But step by step, day by day, I finally managed to achieve my goal. The last workout was the most satisfying one I've ever had. The pain and tiredness didn't even bother me. I guess I can chalk this up as a victory. Well, now it's time to talk about my results. First, I got way stronger. A few days ago, I helped my friend move. His flat was in a new building, and the elevator wasn't working yet. So we had to carry all his stuff, including furniture, to the fourth floor. I can't say it was easy, but I did feel more powerful than before. Also, my body became more defined, especially the lats on my back. I didn't take measurements, but I'm pretty sure my back got wider. Besides, I gained around 4 pounds, and it's all pure muscle mass. I think drinking protein shakes before each workout did its job. In other words, I've never been in better shape. But the most important changes were in my mind. I can't remember the last time I was this proud of myself. I surprised myself with my own dedication and persistence. Now I know for sure that limits exist only in our head. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. I'm so grateful for this difficult but rewarding experience that I decided to trade my gym membership for the Murph workout every day. Does anyone want to join me? <laughs> Sound off in the comments. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.